six years ago in the dark times. I made a super budget gaming PC that you guys seem to like. Then two years later when I escaped the dark times, I created this very channel and uploaded a $300 budget gaming PC build as my first ever video. And you guys seem to really love it too and it probably made my career. Thank you. And since then, every two years, I've built a $300 budget PC build. This time, it's different. COVID is gone, GPU market, no. The whole PC market is down, meaning prices are low. So that got me wondering how good a PC I can build today with $300. So we're gonna build a $300 PC and compare it with my previous video, especially the NLC build, yay. Let's go. My strategy for a $300 PC is usually getting a base PC that's about $100 to $150. And I expect a CPU with at least 4 cores that's not too old. The motherboard just pairs with the CPU. RAM, just 8 gigs of RAM. Storage, at least a SATA SSD. I don't need the case to be nice at this price range. And a good enough power supply because I want to put a GPU in this base PC. And sometimes these cheap PCs are not gaming PCs. It's more office PCs so they have a power supply apply without PCIe power, so something to look out for. Then the rest of the money, just for the GPU. So the goal is to buy a GPU that performs well and a base PC that doesn't bottleneck this GPU. $300 is always a stretch, but I believe I can do it. I already saw some listings. So in terms of the base PC, there is this listing, a working PC set with keyboard, mouse, camera at $80. 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte HDD. It's a cheap buy at $80. But other than telling me it's an Intel CPU, I don't have a lot of info. So this is a no. There is this DIY gaming PC, $150. Looks like there's a good CPU cooler. i5-4670 with an SSD. Front panel fans unable to fully close. Okay. And no GPU. Extra money for GPU. Not a bad listing, but let me show you what I chose. It's a little bit sus, but you, you want to buy this kind of PC, there's a bit of risk. So the listing is gaming PC needs to go. $120, NVIDIA GeForce GTX 680. Not bad. The gaming PC is one year old, and you don't know much about it. Fair enough. The picture has a 550 power supply, Hexa Plus. That's good for a GPU. Not bad. And the picture right here, writes 6600k hey, that's that is a pretty sweet deal if i can get it what i have done is i tried to negotiate down to 100 dollars because whole number so we're gonna see how it goes because for the gpu i'm trying to get an rtx 2060 there's a lot of listings on carousel that sells it around 150 but a lot of them are old listings or they don't reply. So the one that I managed to somewhat talk to is a refurbished RTX Zotac 2060. Why I want a 2060 is for the DLSS. DLSS 2 is pretty sick for free FPS. So the only listing I can find is $200. Let's see whether he can get it to $100 and then both of them will be $300. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just wait, okay, I'll, ju I'll just wait. Oh, I did it. So we got the deal for $100. Uh, we're gonna, now we're gonna just go travel. And you know what? I just recently bought a Insta360. So we can do a traveling montage like this. Ah yes, children, the future of our world. Anyway, the first stop was Thompson Plaza MRT to collect the RTX 2060, which is actually a gigabyte, not a Zotac, my mistake. And I also managed to get it down to $175. Now, that's my YouTube channel. Uh, tech channel, I build PCs. So I usually, every two years, I do like a $300 PC build. Okay, here's a gigabyte RTX 2060. Uh, it's refurbished, so it's clean. The, the fans are new, look at that. Hitsing, perfect, no dust at all. Apparently, he didn't even open from the back. He just got it from CDL, which is the warranty, you can see. So yeah, I think for $175 is a very good deal. I think this can last maybe two, three years, hopefully. All right, the next location is La Venda. So I had to take the MRT and when I was there, I texted the guy. Hello, I'm at La Venda. Block I'm here. I'll come down, leave me. Or you can come up, whichever. I can't leave it down as I have no bag. Okay, so what's your address? Lift C. 
o'clock. Yes, I wanted you to feel my frustration. To learn that he was just a kid, so... Thank you. So, what, what is this smack? Also, oh, do I have the, the case in front? Ah, okay. This one I ah. know, but the... Oh, okay. So, you, you, see, you mentioned something about smacking the PC? Yeah, you turn it on, where you can just turn on and just... Oh, okay. Alright, can. Not the most smoothest of deals, but... I got the PC. It has a 6600K, 6080, 16 gigs of RAM. And the important part is there's actually a very pretty reliable PSU. 550 watt power supply, which is just enough. Actually, not just enough. The recommended PSU for a RTX 2060. The condition of the PC is, uh, I mean, as normal, it's a bit dusty. Came with a cover, but it didn't come with the screws and it's chipped out. You know what? $100, can't complain. And also from the picture, as expected, missing IO shield, which, you know, I used to be okay with it, but now I'm like, oh, it just seems incomplete, especially if I want to sell this in the future. But I have a solution. I 3D printed universal IO shields. And the reason why I got so many is because there's a minimal quantity order uh, of $10, actually. So I got nine, N nine, which is relatively very cheap. Not relatively, it's very cheap. Uh, so I'm in Additive In. And if you're thinking of making this yourself and you don't have a 3D printer, all I did was I downloaded the 3D printed file, which I will link it in the description. Upload it on Additive In website, which I will also put it in the description. The choice of material, I just went for the PLA General 100% fill and just sent my order. And when it was done, because it was nearby my place, I just went down to pick it up. Okay, I haven't touched this for a week, but you know what? We're here, and I feel like because this is a second-hand PC, I should do it at home, right? What for do it in the office when it's budget? Ah! So I'm gonna test out this PC without changing the GPU to the 2060 first, just to see how this GPU goes, but I realize... You don't ever have the screws for the GPU. <laughs> oh my god. So yeah, I'm just gonna test it out. Let's see if this PC runs or I need to knock on the PC. Monitors turn on. Will it boot? It boots. Overclocking failed. Why is the kid overclocking this? I'm in BIOS and everything seems cool. The CPU temperature is at 29 degrees. Motherboard temperature at 27 degrees. 16 gigs of RAM. 6600K. GPU is actually running. All right. Great. They have a passcode. Now I gotta reinstall Windows to test this freaking PC. Be right back. So it was a little bit more complicated to install Windows 11. It had Windows 10, but it had the whole BIOS. So I had to update BIOS to get the security thing, the TMP, TPM uh, 2.0. Took two hours to freaking install Windows because of all the updates. And I just found out something. The GPU is not the 600 something. It's a 780 Ti. I just got a 6600K with a 7080 Ti for 100 bucks. I feel a bit bad because the, the kids probably didn't know, but good for the video, I guess. And the 780 Ti is 70% better than the 6080. 2060, it's another 70% improvement. Plus you get DLSS2. So now I'm gonna do benchmarks, the superposition because that was what I was using during NOC time and the, my first video. Then after that, I will change the GPU, install the IO shield, and uh, we, we, do, we play some games. Yeah. Let me quickly go through how to set up a universal IO shield. First, you have to remove the motherboard. Once that's done, you can place the IO shield in the case and align the motherboard to it. Then it's just marking the openings and cutting it. I was using a wire cutter at first, but later on, I just used this nail clipper which was way more effective. You might want to align it a few times, making sure not to cut too much. And once that's done, voila! Looks pretty good, right? Also, there was a pill on the motherboard. Then it's just installing the GPU and it's all done. So a few things that I did, I tried reseeding the RAM to the first priority and it didn't work. So I just went back to like the second priority slot. I actually bought an extra SSD that's 500 gigabyte. Because of this brings us over the budget, but the only reason why I'm doing this is benchmark purposes. Because I haven't talked about the SSD that comes with it, is the SanDisk SSD Plus, which is a shit SSD. Uh, only 120 gigabytes, so 
Once I install Windows 10, I basically only have 80 gigabytes. Now these days, games are like 200 gigs, which is what kind of what I want to do in the next video. Upgrading this $300 PC, which I feel like a lot of people have at home. Like a very old PC that you're still using. Maybe $100 can refresh the whole PC, a new look, faster windows, and it will feel new. Anyway, the benchmarks are in for superposition. The 780 Ti, which I bought for 100 bucks, already beat all the $300 PCs or $400 PC builds I've ever done. Yeah. 100 bucks beat all the 300. With the 2060, it's an additional 30 to 40 percent improvement. It is pretty impressive. The only thing that is really lacking is the CPU. 6600K is really not very good. I tried to download Cyberpunk and CS2, used up 50 percent of the CPU. While downloading it, I tried to open up Black Ops 6 Zombies. Crash. I don't know how it's gonna go. I haven't played any games with it. We, let's try CS2. CS2 is using 80% of the CPU and it hasn't even gone in game. The cool thing is, even if it's running 100%, it's pretty cool. So if I wanted to, I can overclock this CPU. I doubt we're gonna get a lot of frames per second because it's a CPU intensive game. Ah, oh, it's really struggling. What? Four calls cannot? Don't die on me! Try one more time. Looks like no problem. No problem. So we're running around 80 FPS, sometimes going down to the 60 FPS. All right, kill. Got the kill, you, bam, bam, bam. Ah, damn it. Not too bad, not too bad. So I guess actually lowering the quality will give me more FPS. Yeah, low does give me up to 100. So it's a 20% improvement. The GPU is running at 40%. You can play the game. It's a pleasant experience, but it's gonna be hard to be competitive. Let's try Cyberpunk. So the minimum requirement for Cyberpunk is actually the 6700. This is the 6600K, which is actually a big difference because the 6600K is four cores, four threads, and the 6700 is four cores, eight threads. And I can really see the thread count really bottlenecking the GPU and the whole PC. We're gonna start low. We're gonna see pure performance without the RSS. Actually, the menu feels a lot smoother than like CS2. Okay, frames per second. There's a lot of tearing. 50 to 60 FPS. 1% being 45 FPS. So average FPS seems to be around 60 FPS. And sadly, sadly, although we have a 2060, the CPU is bottlenecking the 2060. So I can't run it. The reason why we bought RTX 2060 is for the DLSS, so let's turn on DLSS. Actually, there is a bit of improvement in the 1%. It's a bit on the higher 50, higher 40 frames per second to 60 frames per second. So even when I run DLSS, it's not giving me more frames per second, but it's actually using the GPU even less. So now it's running at 39%. DLSS won't do anything if your CPU can't handle it. This 300 PC beat all my other $300 PC, even the NOC $400 PC. It's a bit sad that the 6600K is like the best CPU I've ever gotten in this challenge. But because it's 4 cores, 4 threads, it's really suffering. But the thing about it is because I got a really really good GPU, the RTX 2060 at a $175 price range. Regardless, if you do a build like this, you're gonna expect to play games comfortably but nothing too fancy and nothing too competitive. For $300, it's a, it's a really really good deal. Let's do a quick breakdown. I got the Intel i5 6600K, 780Ti, 16 gigs of RAM, 120 gigs of SATA SSD, 550 watt power supply for $100. For the GPU, the Gigabyte RTX 2060 for $175, about $1.50 for the Universal I.O. Shield, and a 500 gigabyte SATA SSD for benchmarks for $29, which brings the total to $505.50. I will be doing a part two on this PC, somewhat refreshed because you know the case doesn't have a side panel, uh, it's outdated and it needs a few more upgrades for it to be really good. And I, I really believe if you have an old PC, the part two will be perfectly for you. So stay tuned for that, subscribe. If you wanna see certain games run uh, benchmark on this PC, let me know. I will be sure to put it on the next video. I will do more proper benchmark in the next video. Uh, until then, I hope you enjoyed this video. Comment, like, comment, subscribe, and I am done.